Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a USB BAS flashback on the MSI MPG Z890 Edge Ti Wi Fi. Hopefully, this video is going to be useful to you. Uh, it's probably actually quite beneficial to do this before you actually start installing Windows. There are some important updates which are actually part of this platform, which uh, make it a little bit faster and a little bit smoother in operation and potentially could uh, help some of those blue screen issues that some early adopters are facing. So things you're going to need for this, you're going to need a ATX power supply. You're also going to need to use the 24 pin main power supply socket and also the eight pin CPU supplementary power. You also need a 32 gigabyte or less USB flash drive. You can use larger drives, but you will need to create a smaller FAT32 file partition on the drive. We've done a separate video on that which will be linked in the video description below. So if you want to see how to do that, if you can't get hold of a smaller drive, then yeah, you can do it that way. You can use drives as small as like about 64 megabytes if you can find one that old. So it doesn't need to be a particularly big drive, just needs to be able to hold the BOSS file itself. Also something you'll need is something to actually put the motherboard on to keep it safe and secure. And that is pretty much it other than needing a working computer to be able to go to the MSI website and actually download the BIOS, which we're going to do next. Okay, so we're on our Windows machine here. I'm gonna put my USB drive into the computer and hopefully it's blank. Yes, it is. Um, if you're not too sure, it's best to erase it anyway. Obviously make sure you've got any data you need. Click on format, make sure it's FAT32, the default for this particular drive and the allocation size you can just set to default. If there's a volume label, make sure to remove that. Once you're ready, click on start you'll get a warning saying that it's going to erase all the information on the disk. So if you're happy to do that, click OK. And then once that's done, it'll say format complete. So now we can get the BOSS from the website. I'll put links for this in the video description. So head over to the support tab and then you want to go into drivers and downloads and firmware and BIOS. There's information on how to flash it, but they don't show you how to do the USB flashback, which is a bit of a pain. So we're going to go for the latest one. Now with this, because it is a very new board and the bosses are coming out thick and fast to fix the uh, initial release problems, I would suggest in this instance, I will use a beta version because, well, you haven't got a lot of choice. They're not going to be able to test these in as much depth as we would like at the moment. So you're going to be kind of slightly in front of the bleeding edge. Uh, you can go for an older one if you want to. So the older one fixes the local network would sometimes be disconnected. This new one f updated the CPU microcode, also fixed the conflict between discrete GPU and integrated GPU, which was causing black screens and also the uh, overclocking solution. So we're going to download this one. This one's actually dated the 28th of October. We're currently recording on the 3rd of November. So we'll click on download. We'll save it to our Windows desktop. And that shouldn't take very long at all. So we can minimize this window, find our folder, which is currently zipped, as you can see, because it's got a zip on it. So the most important thing is we need to unzip it. So choose Extract All. If you've got something like WinZip or WinRAR or whatever, I would avoid using that if at all possible. Use the built-in Windows Extraction tool. It seems to be a lot less problematic. When you're ready, click on Extract All. It will ask you where you want it to go. So we'll just choose the desktop and choose extract and this is going to give us our file folder so if we go into the folder we've got a file here which is 32 kilobytes or 32,000 kilobytes in size so this is our BAS file so we actually need to rename this so make sure that if you go into view and show make sure you've got file name extensions and hidden items shown otherwise you won't see the file extension once you're ready you want to rename this file so just delete everything which is there and we want to call it msi.rom. Um, it has to be that. Don't ask me why in the questions, it's just a thing. They have to be called that. When you click on OK, it'll say, do you want to rename it? Yes, we do. And there we go. So now we've got our msi.rom file. It's the right file size. So now we can right click and either copy and paste it, or if you want to, just drag it to your USB drive. The choice is entirely up to you. Just check that that is there. Yes, it is. Excellent stuff. So let's eject that drive. And now we can head over to our little test bench and get this sucker flashed. Okay, so now we've got our USB drive ready. So let's set up our little platform. So I'm gonna use the motherboard box. That's generally kind of one of the safest ways of doing this. 
So I'm going to put it onto the board here, or onto the box here rather. So we've got our power supply, we've got our ATX supplementary power, CPU1, and also our main 24 pin. So let's go ahead and plug those in. On this board, they're actually in very similar locations. So it's actually a little bit easier than it would normally otherwise be. So we'll do our 24 pin first. Make sure that's snug. And then we'll take our CPU connection. Now this has to go into CPU1, which is the one on the left-hand side if you're looking at the board face on. So I'm gonna plug that one in there. You can if you want to plug both in. CPU 1 and CPU 2, but it does say specifically that it does need that one to be done actually in the instructions. So next thing to do, grab our USB drive and stick it into the BOSS flashback port. Now the BOSS flashback port is the only port on here, which is the black colored one, which is a USB 2.0, and it does actually say on the side of it USB flashback. So I'll go ahead and put it in there. It's actually just below the LAN port, so that should be absolutely fine. Now we're pretty much ready. We have to locate our buttons. So over on this far side, we've got our two buttons. One at the bottom, BOSS flashback. The other one is to clear the CMOS. So you just have to press and hold that to get it started. So I'm gonna turn on the power supply first of all. And now we're gonna give you a close up on one camera so you can actually see the USB light flashing at the back. So now hopefully you'll be able to see the motherboard in one shot and you'll be able to see the flashing LED in the other. So just press and hold the button for about three seconds. One, two, three. And you should see the flashback button start flashing. We're looking for this to change speed. And also you can hear the power supply is just switched on. And also you'll have the CPU LED. And also on the diagnostic readout, you'll also see there's two dashes there, which means it's in BOSS flashback mode. So now you can see the BOSS flashback LED is flashing a bit faster now. Just keep an eye on that, make sure that it does actually change. If you find that the light just flashes about somewhere between three to eight times and then stops or remains solid, that means it hasn't read your USB file or potentially it can't read the USB stick. So you might wanna go back to the previous section, look about formatting and also to make sure you actually got the right file for the right motherboard. The links for that will be in the video description as I said previously. So just let it do its own thing. Now you don't need to do anything, just uh, be patient. It should take somewhere in the region of about three to six minutes, depending on the speed of the drive and also the flash size. So again, just be patient. And what we're waiting for is for the system to shut down. We'll probably hear the power supply click off. You'll see the LCD display turn off and also your CPU light will probably extinguish. And also the light here at the back should stop flashing and then remain off. So we see now, it's actually changed speed again. So this is now in the reading format or the writing. So again, just be patient, let it do its thing. And there we go. The power supply is clicked off. And our BOSS LED has now stopped doing what it was doing. And as you can see, the board is kind of semi-powered. So we've still got the CPU LED there because the CPU isn't installed, as you can see, and also the diagnostic D-LED still reading the uh, two dashes on there. So that is it, the light's out now, so you can just turn off your power supply and wait for it to discharge. Your lights will go out, take out the USB stick, and that is pretty much it. So there you go, that is how to use a USB stick to flash the BIOS on your MSI MPG Z890 Edge TI Wi-Fi motherboard. Hopefully this video has been useful to you. If it has, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and then the chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.